The new album from Bicep is called Isles. Matthew and Andrew are here, are my guests. And um, firstly, guys, I've been reading in a lot of the reviews that you are now electronic music royalty. Are you aware of that? <laughs> I don't know about that. Is there, is there a crown in the post? <laughs> yeah, yeah no, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's very humbling to hear that, but um, I don't know. <laughs> well, you've been you've been together like what you know twelve years or, or, or thereabouts at this stage. They're yeah. going to be calling you veterans soon if you're not careful. Oh, no. <laughs> I've got the grey hair, so. <laughs> yeah. So look, tell me, tell me about this album. It's been getting some absolutely stunning reviews. I mean, lots of people when you're listening to music, you get your own, you know, feeling about what it might be about. But one thing I do get from it is and i could be completely wrong about this it does strike me as something uh, somewhat of a personal album or maybe every album is yeah no it definitely is um hum, it's a lot more introspective than our first one i think it's we felt a lot more comfortable from the from the get-go writing this one where we were very we had a clear idea of what we wanted to do with it and i think um certainly after we finished the album looking back the name isles really stuck out to us as as a, as as a way of marking the influence is the album, which has really been about living half of our life in Ireland and the other half over in London in England and really the kind of two different cultures and, and the splits and all the influences we got from both places. And uh, really this album, really it, it, it marks kind of the halfway point where we spent half of our life in one place and half our life in the other. And kind of, we really do yeah, feel it, do, it does reflect both places for us. And you say uh, you're, you're based in London these days. Was that... Yeah. Given when you formed, you were gonna you were gonna have to to move away to a certain extent. Well, no, it's because when we formed, we were just running a blog and just having fun playing 40, 40 cap venues in London. It was never really a, a career. We both worked in like design, and um, uh, yeah, we had full time jobs, and this was kind of a hobby almost, and it was never intended to be anything more than that. Just kind of grew very naturally and progressively over time. A lot of people use the word cinematic, and I've been I've been guilty of it myself. And they're not quite sure how to to describe something. There is would I be right in saying that there are elements of of the album Isles that are in some way cinematic? I mean, we we I think we try and especially now on um, the last couple of years um, with 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 writing albums try and really get a storytelling element across in the music. We don't really we, we try and move out, like to getting the extra layers into the music beyond it's like sort of being like a house record where we actually really have these multiple layers that talk to each other and, and they kind of move and develop and tell a story. I think that's probably where that cinematic element comes from, you know, the the, the kind of having this sort of start, middle and, middle and end of songs, yeah. really. We're also really aware of like energy and how you harness energy through a track, which we probably weren't previously. It was always yeah. just full blast. Like tension and release and really building stuff up and not necessarily meaning that the release has to be kicking off, but more like musically being able to bring in extra elements and harmonies that kind of either create tension or release. So something we spend a lot of time on is the music writing aspect, like the, the music theory and the chords and sort of getting a point where we understand exactly what we're trying to say and, and being able to say it. It's also nice to, when you watch movies like Johan Johansson is like one big influence in terms of how he um, like narrates music through scenes and how you can create tension release and it might not even relate to the image on screen but it makes you think differently and um, yeah I definitely we watch a lot of films and the scores definitely make a massive difference in terms of how you digest the the like medium really when you're creating something like this when you're writing it when you're recording it when you're making the album is it in the back of your mind that you might not be able to promote it tour it the way you would normally do it, it was that in your heads when you were making this album we actually um we started writing in 2019 um in january and we actually finished it before the pandemic so it was finished about March last year and it was it was actually ready. It was it still needed to be mixed, but we might have been able to have got it out at the end of last year. But we just thought, you know, well, let's just let 2020 end and start fresh. We it seemed the right thing to do. And we still we still got to have the singles coming out all of last year, which felt like the right it was good to have some pacing. But yeah, the writing was really completed before the pandemic, which is great because I think it would have been uh it'd be quite difficult to certainly write 
music with with the pandemic going on i mean we we might have written stuff but it might have i think the sort of uplifting side of the al- album would have maybe got lost and probably been a bit more kind of down <laughs> When you look at things like influences, you know, whether direct or indirect, do you look back home at, at maybe people like David Holmes, Japanese pop stars, Headrock Valley Beats, and, and those people like that? Did, have they inspired you in any way, or, or have the influences and inspirations come from farther afield? I, would, like, I wouldn't say particularly... Um... Belfast music it would be more a case of like the like older the, art well because we grew up we grew up in the 80s and early 90s in in Ireland so it was kind of it'd be further afield like even like, like my, the Clannard and stuff and like even yeah. my mom and Enya on all the time and that core, even, coral a, a Irish element and but even like things like Thin Lizzy and yeah. like you know like really like Rory Gallagher and stuff like grew up listening to that kind of music and my dad was very much into like the rock, the more rock element. And even when we were growing up, that's kind of the music you heard. And, and stiff little fingers. And yeah, stiff, yeah, like when the the punk element. And you had all these like kind of niche little crowds in Belfast that we had ro- and very specific. Um, but um, I think like more when we got into like Shine, the DJs definitely influenced us in terms of what they were playing. Like the local ones like Timmy Stewart and uh, Rick McClelland and a few others. That which like expanded our knowledge, but at the same time you still had like a Belfast feeling across them all. Even like Phil Kieran, um, and what he was doing at the time was definitely a big inspiration. How much can you, is particularly when you when you're making music, could you have to balance maybe looking back to the past and looking to the future? Is that a de- delicate balance? Because I guess everyone has their own way of of I working. I mean, I think the way we approach the music is never. Our influences seep into us, but we don't really ever sit down and say we want to make a track that sounds like this. We just sit and write and 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 experiment. And every time we, we do a tr- track, there's usually four or five versions before we actually settle on the one we like. So it goes through like a washing machine process of many different things spinning around together. And I think um, it's more really just what, what there's definitely times that the, that the, the influences feel too apparent. And then we that's tracks that we just don't finish where we're just like, oh, this, you know, this just feels too close to something else. We really try and work on it to the point where it doesn't feel like anyone else or tries to get across as many of our own influences personally into it as possible. Um, but I think also we, we use a lot of 80s equipment, a lot of 80s and 90s, like synthesizers and stuff. But we also use a lot of very, very modern stuff that's, that's like coming out this year. So I think that that in itself gives us this balance of kind of old sounding stuff mixed with newer technology and especially like some of the like sequencers and some of the really cool modular stuff we've got. Like Atlas was written on all new modular equipment, um, yet it kind of has an old sound, you know. We're also quite big into like getting like old synthesizers and getting them modified to kind of work with these um, Euro rack modular synths. And it brings it you can have that quintessential old sound but you could do so much more with it and that's definitely something that's quite inspiring for us to kind of yeah. so we do love that old fuzzy like uh 80 sound which is an 80s and 90s sound which i don't think's easy to replicate even like all these amazing new synths we've got they was, sound the yeah they've got something special about them it's it's weird because even after all these years you can't say exactly what it is it's it's not just one thing it's a million things but yeah. it's so minute and if you don't have them you don't really understand it but it is a big thing and it make, it inspires you to make music as well how difficult is it like essentially there's almost a year between the album being completed and mixed uh, and it coming out how difficult is it to just go no we can't change that we just leave it alone just i, don't- I mean we heard um there's mistakes we've already discovered in the album before it even came out that were like oh no like we listened to it honestly like a hundred times before we fit we approved the mastering and even still once the vinyls were pressed i suddenly heard mistakes and i was like no but i think it's just one of those things you just you know what you move on get it right next time um and also we the thing is the album's only the starting point of the tracks that's the that's the home listening version we will be re- remaking these tracks to perform and when we perform them they'll they'll develop and we can get it right the next time and and there'll be stuff about the new versions that we maybe don't like and it just that's like one of the beauties of music it keeps developing and you know always moving 
And the when of of live performances really it, it's kind of no one really knows at the moment. Yeah. But that's got to be exciting to have that somewhere on yeah. the horizon or maybe beyond the horizon. It's that that's got to keep you really motivated, does it? Yeah, it's keep it keeping us keeping us motivated, but it's like it's it's still quite a distant way off at the minute. It's like once everything starts to settle, we'll be a lot we'll be energized again for that. But at the minute, we're kind of just thinking about that in the future, like the long term future, and yeah, I'm gonna make music for that. So when it does come back, we'll be we'll have so many weapons really to unleash. <laughs> well, look, uh, I know there's a lot of people looking forward to just live music coming back in a, in a safe environment, and I, I you're you're up there on my list to to check out uh, because I haven't got to see you live yet. So great to see you guys and great to speak so to you and the congratulations on this album oh. it really is um i've run out of superlatives i'm not just saying that <laughs> thanks so much for your support like yeah, i really always. appreciate it and like big love to everyone back in ireland 